The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks. Come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, we've had a great time in Denver this weekend. Uh, had a Nadex conference out there. We went out and uh, Tommy talked about time in the trade and reading volume. And uh, we went into, then I went into the binaries and the spreads and the ultimate hedge strategy. And um, once I put all that uh, together, then we came back and did some risk management. And uh, basically, just, you know, how do you put it all together? And uh, had a great response, had a, a lot of people out there, and uh, got some great feedback. And we look forward to doing a couple more of those as well this year. So uh, in different areas across the country. And um, so those of you that, uh, you know, were able to make it, uh, we appreciate you coming on out. And um, if you have any questions, like I said at the uh, conference, just feel free to give me a call. And, um, you know, anybody who's out there has any questions about, you know, binaries, spreads, futures, forex. Um, you know, any of the above right there and uh, options, whatever, just feel free to give me a call right here at 877-927-6648. Again, that's 877-927-6648. All right, well, let's check out the market. After popping those highs, market's doing a little bit of pullback. Europe is uh, front and focus right now. We got the S&P down 12 points. We have the NASDAQ down 36. We have the Dow down nearly 100 points right now, down 95 right now. We got the Russell down seven and a half. We got gold up four points. We got a uh, copper right now looking at it. it's about down a third of percent, and we have silver down almost one percent on the day. Corn is down about half percent. Soybeans up over one and a half percent, and then uh, that's one and a half points right there, um, and the, or actually twelve, <laughs> twelve and a half points. Um, and then like, oil right there down a buck fifty. Again, oil down a buck fifty, and. Um, Let's see here. So on the ags right there, we got uh, soybeans winning with being up the big number right there. But uh, oil right now down a dollar fifty, so over one and a half percent down move on oil for the day so far. Commodities dropping, and uh, looking at natural gas, that commodity is moving on up, up one percent right there. And no big surprise, we expect a one to four percent move on natural gas on a daily basis. Looking over at euro dollar, it is down a hundred and seven pips. Uh, from the settlement of Friday, so uh, definitely it is moving. And we got the pound dollar at 44, with the Aussie dollar up 21. The U.S. yen is down 18 pips. The U.S. Canadian up 24, and the U.S. franc up 14. So uh, dollar index overall showing positive, up uh, 0.44, basically over half percent right now. The only area the dollar is lagging is uh, basically against the U.S. yen. So uh, like I said, the big news being um, Europe being you know back in focus. And uh, Greece having riots right now. I think they're on three, four, maybe five days right now um, where there's a bunch of strikes going on. Like they've shut down a lot of the ships and everything. And people on the islands can't even get groceries. Um, and because the guys that drive the ships are like, you know what, this isn't going to work for us. And, uh, you know, and then you got elections. We got bonds coming out this week on Spain. I mean, there's just there's a lot happening right now. And uh, just a lot of instability um, really just across the globe. And uh, so... You know, right when everybody's saying bye, 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 that's uh, that's you know one of the best indicators to sell. <laughs> and uh, one of the things I was noticing is, you know, I mean, one of the things I was taught was, you know, look in the news, and when everybody's saying bull, then that's when you need to get cautious. You know, when everybody's saying bear, that's when you need to get cautious on the short side. And uh, that advice serves very well. It doesn't mean, of course, that you just go short because everybody's saying bull or because everybody's saying bear, you know, and vice versa. But uh, you know, but you definitely want to start, you know, paying attention and uh, seeing if there's, you know, anything right there that you need to, you know, take notice of. And uh, a few of the things that I noticed, we've talked about this before, but just watching the markets and noticing how, you know, we've had some just weird um, implied volatility movements um, as of late, meaning like implied volatility, you know, like the VIX and stuff like rising, um, even though we're looking at markets where, uh, you know, the market may be going up, but the VIX was also going up and obviously we shouldn't be seeing you know that happen so uh, when stuff like that's happening then you know there's something to miss and uh, you want to take note of that and I'll show you an example right here let me pull it up on my chart and 
There we go. Like right over here, um, we saw that the market went up a lot um, on, you know, the first there on Friday. But check out how, you know, you got the, you know, the VIX dropping. Okay, that's normal. Market goes down, market goes up. So nothing out of the normal there. But then like right here, we have the market dropping a little bit, but the VIX are rising. Okay, so that's like your warning sign. When you see that happening, I mean, take major notice that, um, you know, the upcoming spike may be the last spike um, for a little while. So, uh, and then right there, you know, we're inverted. That's good. You know, and we got to constantly see inversion. And then right there again, we see up VIX, up market. And same thing, up VIX, up market. Up VIX, up market, you know. And um, that one's lining up. So if you go back and you look just day over day, you got it again, up VIX, up market. So... Again, tie all that together, and you start going, you know what? I, something's weird when the VIX is rising and the market's rising. So uh, that means they're, you know, it's sort of your, uh, I guess, you could, maybe you could call that your, I don't know what Tommy would call this, but uh, your accumulation phase of options uh, going into a rising market. So that VIX demand increasing. And uh, with that, you know, accumulation happening, that means they're, you know, they're starting to layer in and starting to protect. So the big boys are getting a little bit nervous about the run up. And um, maybe looking to do uh, you know sell off shortly, and we've already you know seen a pretty big sell off today, as we can see right here. Uh, we already broke the lows of Friday. We're not closing below it as of yet, but we definitely broke those lows. And uh, you know something just to always be paying attention. One of the things I tell people to always pay attention to. Um, and let me see. I'll go in the futures. Is always look for you know obviously and this is you know this is pretty common, but always make sure that you were looking um, at previous days, you know, open high, low, close. So on the SPX, we don't see it, and that's, that's sort of interesting. I'll go ahead and pull that back up for you. On the SPX uh, index, we don't actually see a break below the low, but on the S&P E-minis, we are actually seeing that break and right now being below the low of Friday. So seeing the, even a little more bullishness on the S&P E-mini side of things. Of course, that includes the overnight session, uh, but, you know, as we know, this down move happened, you know, already right there. And just live, we're currently lower than the uh, lowest price, even including the overnight session from last Friday. So either we're going to pull back and just pop and fly or uh, we're going to see some fun volatility over the coming weeks. And uh, that's where the money really can be made. It's also where the money can really be lost. And uh, so one of the things that I, you know, definitely recommend that you check out is to go over to tfnn.com and click on the uh, Nadex banner. So if you haven't done that, click on this Nadex banner right here and that'll take you to their website, to Nadex's website, and you can click on range of markets. You can find out you know, what all the different markets they trade, but also you can uh, go to our products on the Nadex website there and you'll see demo account. You can sign up for a demo account. It takes literally about 15 seconds. Before this commercial break, you can have that set up. And, I mean, you put in a username, first name, last name, phone number, and email address. Click apply for demo, and uh, they'll get you going pretty fast. And uh, they'll, what they'll do is they'll send you an email with a password. You can log in right away. Now, for a live account, go over here and click on create account at the top. And you can go from clicking the start button to a funded live account in as little as five minutes. So, very fast, very easy process. Um, they'll do a autumn, like if you do an ACH deposit, then they'll actually give you an upfront credit. On the first one, and they'll increase that amount they'll give you an upfront credit on while they're waiting on the ACH to clear. So you can get started really quick. And um, these kind of markets, these are the ones that you want to be trading Nadex on especially. So, I mean, you can trade them in flat markets, um, depending upon what kind of strategy you want to use. And you can combine the products, the binaries, and the spreads. You know, there's a lot of different ways to trade it. But uh, when there's volatile markets, it's, you know, to me it's almost insane to not be trading with it. Simply because... Uh, I mean, they define your risk. You never get a margin call. You can use less money uh, for margin. You get massive leverage. Uh, one of the things we were showing this weekend was I was going in and showing literally how you, I mean, some of the trades were you know five hundred to one or thousand to one leverage in your favor, but maybe only uh, you know ten, twenty, fifty, you know hundred dollar risk against you. Maybe a you know two hundred dollar risk against you if you did multiple you know contract to equalize the uh, spread against the actual underlying market. So your margin was lower. Your risk was capped, and the market could go against you as far as it wanted to. Your risk would never increase. But here's the big thing. Stop loss without a stop trade, okay? Meaning it can go against me, but I don't have to get out of my trade. 
And, you know, we've all been there. We've all had the market move against us. And, uh, you know, as it does at our heartbeat, starts, you know, boom, 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 starts just beating. And then, of course, then our mind starts going, our emotions start thinking, you know, <laughs> instead of our mind thinking, our emotions start thinking. And we're like, okay, what do we do? All right, so if it, uh, you know, we start, you know, we do the prayer thing and we hope it doesn't happen and we, you know, we yell, we chant, whatever, um, whatever, whatever your thing is. And, uh, you know, you're just hoping it doesn't hit your stop. And the problem is that can go on for a while. And then that, then you're exhausted. By that time, you're like, man, if I can just get out of this thing at break even, I'll be happy. And then you do get out of break even, then it takes off. Uh, or it does hit your stop. And now you're left with a really difficult decision of do I go ahead and get in again and risk more money? Do I let it, uh, you know, do I not get in and watch it just ride all day back up in the original direction I thought it was going to be? And I was like, I could have made that money back. Or do I go the other direction? And uh, pretty much whichever one you choose is, you know, often wrong. So, I mean, have you ever been there, you know? So often wrong, whichever way you seem to choose after you get hit. And uh, so with Nadex, you don't have to make that decision. That decision's out of the way. Because you don't have to make a decision because you're still in the trade. Now, if you want to go the other direction, you can. But you get to, the cool thing is you can leave the one that you have on on. And then you could put the opposite direction on also. So if it does go in your original direction, you still have the potential to make money. But if it does go down, you have the potential to make money. So the only decision you have to make is, do I want to go ahead and go in the other direction also? So you get to do the also, not the or. And uh, this makes a huge difference in your psychology of trading. And uh, I think it helps you manage your profit a lot better because you can go in and since you haven't been like wrestling with your heartbeat being, you know, way above, you know, full, you know, speed running, uh, you know, heart rate rate where, you know, beating at 180, you know, beats a minute and higher type thing. Um, then you're able to go in and go, you know, I can chill out. I can relax. And instead of thinking about the money, because the money's handled, as long as you don't risk too much of your account by doing too big of a contract size. The money side of everything is handled, and that allows you to you know, think a lot more clearly and basically it lets you allow you to go in and look at the charts and trade to trade well, not trade because fear and greed are overcoming you. And what will happen is you have the fear thing going on because it's ticking against you, and then the fear thing will kick in when it actually starts going in your favor because you're so exhausted after three hours of an elevated heart rate that you just want to get out. You're done. You're mentally like, I, I just can't take being down that much again, you know, and I, I can't take having to make that decision and everything that goes with it. And uh, and the cool thing is, I mean, you don't even have to wait till expiration. You know, you can hop in. I had a trade on this morning, and uh, I was looking at a potential trade and hopped into it and wasn't going the direction I wanted to go. I had a couple hundred dollars risk on the trade. wasn't big at all. But, uh, you know, I was waiting on the report. When the report came out, I was like, you know what? This isn't working the way I wanted to. I closed it out. I'm glad I did. It worked out well. But uh, I closed it out and, you know, took like a $20 hit. It would have been a $200 hit. But I was able to think a lot more clearly because I didn't have all the emotions flooding me because of decisions I'd have to make in an instant if the trade went against me. So, uh, anyway, stare it there. We'll be right back after this break. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, what we're going through now is just looking at some of the fundamentals, uh, talking about where the market's at. And um, some of the things that have impacted this move overnight. And uh, it's just been getting uh, sort of crazy this weekend out of Europe. I'm sure that the uh, European finance minister will have all sorts of nice things. Um, I'm sure Draghi will come out and he'll, you know, make it sound like there's no problem at all. There never has been, never will be. Um, and we'll see uh, how the market responds to uh, the BS he puts out this time. But um, there's some, you know, crazy things going on. Like I said, uh, Greece, you know, they got the strikes going on. I mean, that's not new, but it's, you know, escalating even further. And uh, the Greek finance minister was actually sent a bullet in the mail. I um, read that uh, story over on uh, Reuters there, and um, so I mean it's it's getting it's getting interesting. Um, you know, Spain and Italy having all sorts of issues, and uh, basically the prime minister there facing you know allegations and everything else from you know improper basically improper payments, and uh, basically people are just they're sick of them. So uh, they have just an approval of like I want to say it's like just above 20%, it's like 24, 25%. And um, so the people are obviously not very happy. And, uh, you know, I mean, you can't really blame them. They just had a Spanish unemployment report come out, and it almost looked good, you know. Uh, came in at 132,000, <laughs> you know, but they expect it to be 150. And, um, you know, but uh, so, I mean, I guess in that case it's good, but uh, they thought it'd be, you know, down by 59,000 like last time. And then they said 74.3, 128.2. So uh, basically, it's a very, very high number. 
and uh, it just continues to get worse and worse over there uh, for the people trying to find jobs. And um, so, you know, that's obviously weighed on the markets. And then, you know, there's all sorts of uh, economic growth issues in Germany that they see uh, coming up and having, you know, skilled labor issues. And let's see, got uh, the not only the unemployment rising there, but I'm just, I mean, I can just go on and on and on. But there's so many things happening. And uh, a big key factor is going to be how the, uh, the auctions go off this week. And uh, so let's check out what we have going on and what we have coming up. So uh, last night we had a uh, move over there on the uh, Aussie dollar. And uh, let's back out a little bit. And uh, you can see that we had the report got released. It had a bit of a drop on it. A bigger, actually, notice a little bit bigger on Aussie Frank. We'll pull that one up in a second. But uh, 730 right over here, 630 Central, 730 Eastern. And uh, market was not, oh, sorry. Let me get here. <laughs> got the wrong time. At the AM instead of the PM. So right here, we got a 1830. You can see that report came out. Wasn't really all that great. Dropped down, had a pretty, uh, you know, decent little move right there, about 30, 40 pips. Pulled back up, but it really hasn't moved a lot off of it. Um, did see a little bit more movement earlier when I was looking. Um, right there on the Aussie Frank, I uh, saw a nice run on the Aussie on that side. But um, overall, just things in um, Switzerland, or not Switzerland, but Australia. Uh, deteriorating and you know we've seen a, just a lot of negative things starting to trend out and it's, it's taken them a while they've had a lot of good reports um, but now you know with lowering their interest rates and everything else that's going on um, starting to see things really take a toll over there and uh, you have another great opportunity tonight go ahead and put this one on your books okay um, you have a couple of them coming up you have the trade balance report at 7 30 eastern over in australia so uh, that's a good uh, you know simple nighttime trade the, uh, of course, the bigger one will be the uh, the cash rate, the rate statement, after all the uh, different um, negative reports we've been having coming out. And, um, you know, will they change it? Will they not change it? You know, obviously, um, either way, it ought to rock the Aussie. Um, there's just, you know, it's starting to get to the point where they're starting to, spe you know, a lot of people are starting to speculate and uh, look at, you know, basically how is that going to come out? How is that going to affect things? And when you put all that together, that means great strangle trade usually. So, again, that's 1030 Eastern time tonight. And uh, so they'll put out not only the rate, but the rate statement of why they left it, changed it, moved it, you know, raised it, lowered it, whatever. And uh, But anyway, it's 10.30 tonight being the big move on the Aussie. And uh, get a little bit of a pre-report there at 7.30 with the uh, trade balance, which is also a high-impact report, obviously, because that's the difference between imported and exported um, goods and services during that month. So that, of course, affects currency, right, because they're importing and exporting. So that trade balance will come out. And... Uh, if we look on over to today, we had, um, or what we got, sorry, today we had a couple of reports come out this morning. We had, uh, we talked about the Spanish unemployment change. We also had the uh, construction PMI coming out of Britain. That came in negative. And we can see the effect right here on the pound. And so I'll pull that one up. And um, so the pound dollar, and on that report, it came out at 4.30, 3.30 central. And uh, so we, you know, it sort of, you know, rose up, gave you a great pullback, and then, um, just, you know, popped on up right there. But uh, the big news being on the euro dollar, and now just everything looks like it might be unraveling. And uh, we'll go over that one. You can see it's just moving on down. Everybody's flying into the dollars right now. And uh, that's just, uh, you know, weighing on the market by pushing up the value of the dollar. Stay there. We'll be right back after this break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF. And over the same two trading days, Market Insights subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Uh, one thing I did want to note is we got that, uh, you know, Reserve Bank of Australia is going to be having their um, interest rate announcement tonight. And uh, there is an, a growing expectation that it will happen in March. Um, but, there, you know, it, basically it would not be a complete surprise. It's not necessarily priced in, though, which is the advantage right now, uh, that it could actually happen today. You know, so they may actually release that tonight. Uh, there's been, you know, a lot of things, like I said, have been going on with them. So, you know, the building approvals, you know, being, you know, worse than expected. Um, job ads were worse than expected. And uh, we got the, you know, um, employment coming out uh, midweek. So if that comes out uh, negative, that'd be basically, you know, several reasons for them to do it in March. Uh, just because that one number comes in positive doesn't mean they won't do it in March. And uh, we also need to look at, you know, there's several other things going on. Two of the senior uh, ministers resigned. And the uh, Prime Minister Gillard, he um, supported, um, how do I put this? The Prime Minister Gillard, um, basically his support that he has is failing. And um, his allies, you know, or you know, the allies of his opponents are seeking, you know, revenge. Uh, so, you know, he basically is losing his backing. And so we could definitely see some massive moves over there in the Aussie. So uh, keep an eye on that one, especially on their news reports with all the things happening politically right there. And uh, with the economic reports coming out, um, that will basically just, just like here in the U.S., you know, anywhere else, 
when there's a lot of unrest going on, they become a lot more sensitive to the reports. And I've had some great Aussie trades that we talked about over the last uh, month here. And, um, you know, the more volatile, intense it feels over there, the uh, the more reaction we're going to get. And that's where, you know, going in and looking at the strangles are. They're, just, they're very easy trades. You can do them at night. And um, you go in and you try to risk, you know, ideally get a risk of one-to-one. So, you know, 10 to, you know, maybe $15 at most on one side, 10 to 15 on the other, trying to keep the total risk, um, you know, as low as possible, under $25 combined. And uh, you go and you just, as soon as you get in, you set a take profit, if you want to, to get out of it when it uh, hits the strike. So you can get out, you know, say at 50, you know, if you're buying it, get out at, say, 40, you know, somewhere between 43 and 47. If you're selling it, then uh, buy it back somewhere between, you know, 57 and, you know, 53. And uh, just gets you that, you know, nice advantage to uh, have a take profit. And so if it moves and pops and retraces, you can still, you know, use it. Because what you don't want to do is put it on and leave it there overnight it goes way in the money, which is awesome, but then before expiration, you haven't done anything about it, and it comes back up, and you lose on the trade. Um, another thing you can do if you think there's going to be a big move quick, and you want to be able to capture even more potential profit, is you could go in and you could uh, do a straddle on the Nadex spreads. So it's a strangle on the binary because it's two different strikes. But it's a straddle because you're basically looking at the exact same you know, floor on the one you're buying, the exact same ceiling on the one that you're selling. And... Um, so it's a uh, you know, and one of the easiest ways to find out you know what's the best risk reward on what's available is uh, the spread scanner that I use for trading spreads that you can use for trading spreads, and um, you can get access to that for free. You can check it out. Uh, we got the two week trial on there, and uh, you know, I've had a lot of great feedback on it. And um, welcome any feedback that you do have, any ideas that you have. We're always looking to improve, and make it better. But uh, it's pretty sweet. It covers all the markets um, on Nadex, and you can go in and pull it up. Let me see here. Let me. Get it right here on the screen, and you click on Spread Scanner, and then you can say, you know what, I want to look at the Aussie dollar, and then it'll instantly bring up the pairs that uh, meet whatever qualifications you have. So if you don't have any filters on there, it'll show all the spreads, which can be a little bit overwhelming, and that's what you see when you're on the Nadex platform. Um, but without all the risk reward right in front of you, you have to open each ticket, or you have to calculate it in your head. So here you don't have to, you know, open each ticket, you don't have to calculate it in your head. And say you put a, you know, I want to be able to at least make a dollar for every dollar at risk. Ideally, I want better, but I want at least that. I don't want to risk, say, more than $100 on a single contract. And that filters it way down for you. And um, now you have the ability to go in and go, okay, what is available for me? And you can go, you know, how much time is left? How far does it have to move? And so I can see right here, I mean, this is, you know, eight pips on this one, four pips on this one. Mm -hmm. um, this one, you know, eight pips, three pips. But I mean, I got these 21-minute ones. So unless I'm, you know, doing a trade that, you know, the announcement's coming out in the next, like, minute or two. Probably not wanting to, you know, grab that one. So I may go in and go, you know what, I want at least 30 minutes to expiration. And you can obviously have ones that expire a lot further away. But uh, that'll get rid of all the short-term ones. Okay, so now we have, um, I mean, it, basically, there's the only buy choice there is. So if we were just on, you know, buy, I mean, there it is. That, that, that's the only one that meets our requirements. But um, if we want to do a straddle on it, then what we do is we look at, you know, combining... The floor right here, 1.0420. I'll zoom in a little bit there for those of us watching over on Tiger TV. So 1.0420. And ideally, you want to sell one with the same ceiling. So whenever we're doing that, the reason for that is that's what makes it a straddle, by selling the one with the same ceiling. So we have a 2.0 and a 3.0 right here. We've got these two different trades we can look at. I'd probably go with that one because it has the exact same ceiling, so that makes it a true straddle. And you can see how right there, like it meets, Okay. You want to move up, you know, or move down. If it moves up, you know, this one can make as much as 86 bucks for, you know, risking 10 bucks. If it moves down, this one can make it as much as, you know, a little over 90 bucks for risking about five bucks. So, and then you look at, you know, so before me, okay, this one is going to have to make five dollars to cover this one's risk. This one's going to have to make ten dollars to cover this one's risk. Pretty simple. So your total risk on the um, straddle on this would simply be, you know, about 15 bucks. So pretty low risk, and you're going to go long and short. It's basically like being long the Aussie dollar, okay, on a, a mini lot, 10,000 units. And you can do more than one. I'm just giving you an example of one to make it easy. Um, and being short a mini lot. The only difference is you're short, can't lose, you know, basically more than 10 bucks. Uh, and your long can't lose more than, say, 10 bucks. But even if they go against you, you don't get stopped out. So if it whips one way and then comes back the other way, which happens a lot on news, right? It'll, like, fly up and then fly down. And it may fly up a decent amount enough to stop you out. If you're short, and then it flies down. So you don't have to worry about that whole whipsaw effect happening on news reports. You can take advantage of that and go both directions, not be biased, not have to try to predict what's going to happen because you don't know. 
um, when it comes right down to it, when news comes out, what's going to come out. And um, so you have very low risk. And it says you have about four to you know eight pips to uh, break even, meaning that's how far away it is. So if I'm four pips away from break even, okay, what does that mean? Four pips away from break even. That basically, the quick summary is that means this is trading at a price four pips above where the market is at right now. Okay, so the actual Aussie dollar. So if we go in and we pull up the Aussie dollar, it's quoting at you know 1.0424. I can buy this at 1.04 you know to eight to nine. Okay, so basically four pips away um, from where the market is, and then so at four pips, this one will have no risk if it expires at that price. And since I know over here I'm risking five dollars and it's a dollar a pip. Why do I know that? Well, that's one of the cool things about Nadex is every spread, whether you're trading pound yen, the DAX, um, US yen, Euro yen, US franc, US Canadian, S&P, you don't have to deal with all these weird complicated ticks and what the values are. Every tick is always an increment of one, whether it be one or 0.1 or 0.01 or 0.001 or like on FX, 0.001. Every tick is an increment of one and every tick is always worth a dollar, period, every time. So it makes it super, super easy for you. And... Um, so by doing that, then you know what your risk is on the trade, you know how it works, and you can go, okay, well, um, if I make a dollar for every tick and I have about five bucks of risk and I'm a few pips away from break even, then I need to make that five dollars back. So if I'm, right now on the live, I'm basically three pips away from break even. So I need to make five dollars in addition to that. So to actually be break even on the spread, I needed to move up seven pips. Well, I would expect the Aussie dollar to move seven pips on a major news report like interest rates. So that shouldn't be too hard. What about the downside? On the downside, um, you know, it's a little bit, it's, see it says out of the money. So meaning the market's trading above the distance between the floor and the ceiling on the Aussie dollar. So it's a little bit further away. It's about, you know, eight or nine pips right now away. So I'm going to have to move, you know, eight or nine pips to get my five bucks of risk back. And then I got to make my risk up here $10. So like 10 pips, well, it's about 19 pips down um, to be break even on that one. And I could even choose if I wanted to to go in and sort of do a, you know, a little combination where I got a little bit higher ceiling. I don't have to move as far to make money on the trade. And that might be my better trade. Um, it, it will bring on another $10 of risk, but the movement's a lot smaller. So sort of like I can risk the move or I can risk the dollars. I sort of like to risk the dollars. Um, if the, you know, I, I sort of like to risk the move. If the, uh, if the risk of the dollars and the move are pretty equalized, well, you know, why risk the extra money if you don't have to? So either way, I'm going to be risking that money if it goes up. So I might as well, you know, if it goes, if the market does go up, I only lose five bucks on this one. I lose 10 bucks on this one. All right. So if I only lose five bucks on this one, if it moves up, that's a big advantage. Even though I know it has to move down, say another five pips to be at break even. If it doesn't move down, then this works out in my favor. It does move down. It doesn't really matter. It's going to move down. I have that risk. I have to make the bid I spread back. It's, it's really not going to come out that much differently. The only one advantage, I'd say the true one advantage is notice how big, and this will actually plot them all in there for you, how much more money I can make if Aussie dollars keeps falling. So that gives me a lot more, prop, basically up to $200, almost $190 profit potential on that trade. So that's a pretty big advantage um, for only you know $5 more risk. I have another $100 in reward potential. Um, so it depends on how far you think the market's going to move. But again, you're only putting up, you know, to do a mini lot in both directions with capped risk. Um, and so you actually can make money as far as long as it moves far enough in either direction, which isn't that big of a movement required. Then, you know, trade can work out for you really well. And uh, you get to get your bias out of the way and just go, you know what? I think the market's going to move. Not how far. It's, you know, random walk is really what it is. So I don't care how far the market moves so long as it does move. And um, I don't care what direction it moves, so long as it moves one way or the other as fast as possible. And um, this just makes it really easy versus going in and trying to dissect basically every single spread that uh, you know is on the platform. If I go over here and I try to do it on their actual platform, um, then what you can see is I choose Aussie dollar. And let's say I go, okay, here's the 12 to twos. Oh, let me pull up the uh, spreads here. So I got Aussie dollar, I got the 12 to 2, so I got three there, and I got like basically the price, but I don't have the risk and reward without opening the ticket. Now, they make it easy, okay? If I open the ticket and choose one, I'll get the risk and reward, but that's a lot of tickets to open and look at. And I go here, and then I go here, so that's 369. So right now we have 10 different possible spreads on the Aussie dollar you can trade. You open 10 different tickets, you look at all the risk and reward, you're trying to narrow it down, and a lot of times, especially depending on how you're trading, trade may be over before you even get to it. 
Whereas here, I'm like, okay, I want to do this. I want to do a straddle. And it's like Aussie dollar. You get your settings already in there. And you can easily go, okay, so time, that works. This is to break even. Risk, how much can I make? All right, that's my trade. And then you literally just hit the buy button. What it'll do is it'll open, and you can hit the sell button, so you can open both of them at once. And it'll automatically fill in the information for you. So that way, you know, you can basically trade it right away. So they're both open right there. And now you just hit place order, place order. Boom, done. And um, so a pretty simple, pretty easy way to uh, place trades. And uh, it's one of my favorite strategies. So I, I, I like technical analysis. I trade technical analysis a lot. Uh, but uh, I also like the fundamentals just because, I mean, you know what to trade. You like, you know, what market, such as Aussie dollar. You know when to trade because the news announcement's coming out. And, you know, you don't have to be directional. Or, you know, the other option I always show people is, hey, you know, a lot of reports will come out, they'll bounce back and give you a second chance entry. And that's another thing you can take advantage of. You can go in there and takes off, pulls back, say in like 10 to 15 minutes, you hop in and then target that price that it took off to right after the announcement. So that's a way to go one direction and uh, lowers your risk a little bit, but does of course, you know, risk you missing out if it just keeps going and going and going. So either one of those is a fun and actually really simple um, system to implement. So I uh, highly recommend you check it out, at least on the demo account. Of course, always on the demo account first. That's a safer way to learn. Uh, the market is an expensive teacher. So uh, demo accounts, though, uh, a lot of people, you know, it's sort of funny. I hear traders talk all the time. They're like, ah, I hate demo. You know, demo isn't real. It's not the same. And, you know, you're right. Demo isn't real. It's not the same. Um, but what it is is, one, it teaches you to how to hit the right buttons, how to figure out what's going on. I put on a trade. This was the result. Why? Did I understand it? Did it meet my expectations? of what I thought the P&L would be when this happened. You know, just to go through the motions. You'd much rather go through the motions without real money and figure out how to hit all the right buttons. Okay, that's the whole point of demo. Um, you sort of learn the rules of the game. You know, it's like, you know, sit down, and if you're teaching somebody poker for the first time, it's not very nice to, you know, go in and <laughs> um, make it put real cash up. It's like, okay, we'll do a few rounds. We'll teach you how this works. And, uh, you know, whenever I go out to uh, my, my wife's uh, dad's house, my father-in-law's house, you know, they love to play canasta. And um, I'd never played it in my life. and uh, But, I mean, their family is big on that game. My, my family loves playing spades. Uh, and it gets pretty crazy. But uh, they like playing canasta. So, of course, we sat down and we play it. But first we go through just some, you know, quick rounds to make sure I got all the rules down. I've had some of the rules written down, you know, beside me. And, you know, now I got it down. We've been doing it for coming up on 10 years in about a month um, of marriage. So pretty cool. But, uh, you know, we demo trade. You know, we demo played the cards first. And here's another thing. Um, you know, if you want demo to be more real, treat it like it's more real, okay? Just because you have $25,000, if you're not going to be putting twenty five grand of money into your account, if you're going to, say, put five hundred or 1000 to start your account, treat it like it's a $500 account or a $1,000 account. How much would you really risk? That makes a big difference. So you're not just throwing things away, you know? And, you know, actually, you know, would you take profits? If you would, take them. You know, if you'd get out, would you be, like, monitor the market the same way you would when you're live? And when it all comes down to it, the reality is if you can't make money demo trading, you probably can't make it live trading either. Okay. So, uh, it's, it's a <laughs> first, uh, just cause you can make it demo trading doesn't mean you can make it live. But, um, if you can't make it in demo, you know, how do you know, how do you have any, why, why would you think you'll make it live? So, uh, I just, I highly encourage taking advantage of the demo accounts. If you want to figure out how to get that extended, just email me dmartin at tfn.com. I mean, that's Dean Martin at tfn.com. I'll let you know how you can get that demo extended further because it does expire after two weeks, but there's a way to get it expired a lot further out. And uh, so I'd like to share that tip with other traders, so feel free to email me. All right, I'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain in this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of 
Group Shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Checking out what else we got coming up. Um, 4.30 in the morning, if you're an early a.m. trader, you get the uh, pound PMI coming out. So 4.30 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, so that's another uh, big mover and shaker for the pound there. You could look at it strangling that or, uh, you know, looking for potential bounce. If we get one, it may just keep going. And then uh, a little bit later in the day, we're going to have the ISM Manufacturing PMI. And you're going to have another um, Aussie uh, potential setup for the uh, retail sales. And, uh, of course, the two big Aussie reports coming out this week are going to be your employment change and unemployment rate um, on Wednesday and your interest rate tonight, um, even though retail sales will be uh, a big factor. So that's another you know potential one right there. But those, the one tonight and the one um, Wednesday night, are really going to be the uh, big uh, movers to be looking at for just, you know, the Aussie itself. And, I mean, they're going, you know, they're going to have their policy statement come out on Thursday. I mean, just basically, it's, I mean, it's an Aussie week. And uh, so... Basically, pretty much every night you have a, a nice Aussie report coming out in the evening. And I, just, I like to mention those for those who are, you know, like I said, trading part-time and um, looking for some trades in the evening to check out uh, while they're working on uh, getting their way to be able to trade full-time. And uh, right now, just looking at uh, the major indices, I was scrolling through them. I noticed that it looks like most of them are sitting uh, just at or below uh, their one deviation mark. I mean, it's like right there. You can see that right there, sitting right at the one deviation. The S&P, the Dow. Let's go check out the Russell. 
So on the Russell over here, um, we can see it came down literally just within like a couple ticks of one deviation, did a little bit of a pullback. And uh, looking over at the NASDAQ, um, same thing going on, moved on down. And um, NASDAQ actually had the probably the biggest uh, move out of the expectations of movement. It went down to one and a half deviations, been huddling around that um, for, you know, basically since, I guess, you know what, lunchtime. And, uh, but uh, moved, actually hit that one deviation, stopped, hesitated, and then just dropped immediately a whole other half deviation in, you know, basically 10 minutes. So, uh, you know, some big movements on the NASDAQ right there. And uh, that's our major indices. If we go over and look at a few of the currencies, you know, got Euro dollar being the big mover and shaker today. Um, it moved down and it's working on hitting that two deviation mark down to 34.94. And we can go over and check out the uh, Aussie dollar. And it hasn't been as big of a move uh, yet, but uh, everybody's waiting on what's going to happen right there. We have got the solid half deviation move on the Aussie. And we can check out the pound dollar, making this a little bit easier by throwing everything up here pretty quick uh, so we can scroll through these. Moving on up to a little bit above 0.7 of a deviation move on the upside right there on the pound. Uh, looking at the Canadian, uh, U.S. Canadian right there, and we can see it uh, went down 0.7 and then basically up 0.5. So, I mean, that's a little actually more than a one deviation move from bottom to top. And um, But, you know, just a solid movement right there to stay within that range. And uh, again, one of the things I always teach is, you know, when you're looking at, you know, how to, you know, trade this is let's say you are short. What you're looking for is that bar that breaks and closes below the low of the deviation mark on 10 minute bars. Now, I use different bars, different bar types, different bar styles but on the deviations. I like to throw a 10 minute bar chart on. And so I'd have my stop. What if I'm short right above the high of this bar because it broke below it? And then when it moves back up, I get along, I go long and then I'd set my stop right here. And it doesn't mean I can't hop back in again, but uh, what it does mean is it, just in case it does keep going down, I protected my profit. I got another long. Okay, well, now I'll have a stop on this long right here. It moves up. This bar closes above it. Now I have a stop here. It starts pulling back down. So it makes it very, very simple, very easy to uh, go in and trade it. The, uh, the ranges in the market swing trade, basically, during the day, or trend trade it either way. And it um, helps you with your profit management, which is the uh, number one uh, challenge, I guess, on Nadex after you get the risk management down. Because um, it helps take care of that for you, is to you know manage your profits, and um, so that's just a few of the markets. And of course, we always got you know our metals and everything else uh, scrolling through, and you know that's all the time we have for today. But um, I look forward to talking to y'all tomorrow, and I'll see you right here, same time, same channel. And if you have any questions, email me, and uh, definitely stay tuned. We have another great show coming up for you right after this. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Oh. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.